this. All right, John, uh, fascinating stuff. Uh, Ron Paul is speaking now in Minnesota. I want to hear what he's saying. Thank you. <laughs> Sounds like there are plenty of friends of freedom in this audience. I'm delighted to be here. Thank you for inviting me and permitting me to come and visit. There's an important election going on, as you know, and I feel like I'm very honored that I can come and visit with you before uh, this election occurs. But uh, most people know a lot about me. I thought I would start off by saying a few things that a lot of people don't know. One is I'm an OB doctor and delivered about 4,000 babies over about a 30-year medical practice. <laughs> Also, I, uh, one of the, uh, I am the only candidate that served in the military. I was in the Air Force uh, for five years as a flight surgeon, both on active duty and in the Air National Guard. But I want to briefly, in the short period of time I have, is to go over, in general, the uh, platform that I've been running on. And I've been campaigning, uh, of course, for uh, what I call the cause of liberty for a long time. I got involved in politics in the 1970s because I believe we were embarking on something that would lead to an economic disaster. And that was the destruction of our currency. It was back then that we lost our last link of our dollar to gold. And the predictions then, which have been uh, carried out, the predictions would be that it would lead to printing too much money, spending too much money, running up too much debt, having an entitlement system that was out of control, and also a foreign policy that would lead us to do more things overseas than we should be doing. Yeah. Now we've gotten ourselves into this mess because I think we have been too careless. The people have been careless. Our representatives in Congress have been careless, and in careless in the sense that we have not taken the oath of office seriously. I believe that most of our problems have come because we have violated the Constitution and we could solve almost all our problems if we would only send people to Washington who took the oath of office seriously and obeyed the Constitution. Our deficit is, is uh, uh, over a trillion dollars every year, 1.4, 1.5 trillion dollars a year. Now, there's no serious attempt in Washington, and quite frankly, if you listen to the other candidates, there's no serious attempt to cut spending. I believe if you want to get our house in order, our country back on track again, we have to cut spending, so I have proposed to cut one trillion dollars out of the budget in one year. <laughs> I say, no, I've heard they were going cutting spending. Congress was lax. They turned it over to the super committee, and they didn't do a very good job. So there's some automatic cuts of over a trillion dollars starting in the year 2013 and stretching out over a 10-year period, and they're going to cut a trillion dollars out of a $10 trillion proposed increase. That is not a decrease. <laughs> That's $100 billion a year over a 10-year period. We spend $100 billion in debt every single month. That's how serious it is. And we have a chairman of the Federal Reserve Board who has promised that he would use your dollars to bail out all of Europe who bought too much Greek debt, and they're in trouble, and he's promised to bail them out. That is why I emphasize the Federal Reserve. We have to get control of the Federal Reserve. We have to get control of our money. We need sound money. And we are not, we should never allow an organization like the Federal Reserve. They created in the, turn, in the, in the midst of the big bailouts, $15 trillion they churn. Congress was derelict in their duty. They spent a trillion. But the Federal Reserve, 10 to 15 trillion, and they did it in secrecy, and they resent it when I asked questions and said, we need to audit you and find out what you're doing and who you're bailing out and who are the privileged customers. is certainly where we've made a lot of progress in bringing attention to the American people the seriousness of the monetary system. Federal Reserve has been around for a hundred years and it's only been in the last three or four years that it's gotten its attention that it deserves. So I will continue on that. I do not believe we can have a healthy economy with unhealthy money and therefore we have to do something. The first thing we should do is have a thorough audit of the Fed and make sure they're actually holding the gold they claim they're holding.
But the reason the Federal Reserve is so important is it generates big government. The bigger the government, the smaller our liberties. Our government is way too big. That is why I believe that we're at a point now where our liberties have been severely eroded and we need to curtail that trend. We've had, we've had various pieces of legislation that have been very abusive to our liberties. You take the Patriot Act, which was passed in, uh, in 2001. The Patriot Act sounds wonderful, but if it had been called what it really was, repeal the Fourth Amendment Act, it wouldn't have been passed and it ought to be repealed, to tell you the truth. Just, just recently, the uh, National Defense Authorization Act was passed. Buried in that provision was a very, very serious p provision that gives the president now the authority to use the army to arrest any American citizen, deny him a trial, deny him a lawyer, and put him in prison indefinitely. That is not what America is all about. I'm going to break away briefly from uh, Ron Paul. I want to go to Stillwater, Minnesota right now.